July 1977, Texas Children's Hospital, Houston. A six-year-old named David, who has been confined to germ-proof isolator since birth, enters a specially built mobile isolation suit for the first time. For David's family, his physicians and nurses, it is the fulfillment of a long-held dream, a climax to years of hope and suspense. For David, it is the opening of a whole new world of sights, sounds, and space. David has been in sterile isolation longer than any human being. His condition, called severe combined immune deficiency, is a rare genetic defect in which the body has essentially no germ-fighting abilities. Exposure to viruses and bacteria that healthy children normally cope with would be life-threatening. Yet, except for this one complication, David has been physically and emotionally sound since birth. During his infancy, hopes ran high that a bone marrow transplant would affect a cure. But by age three, the odds of finding a suitable donor had greatly diminished. With no corrective treatment in sight, David's physicians began to think seriously about mobility, a means that would allow him outside the isolator for brief periods to enhance his social and psychological development. Since space technology appeared to offer the closest parallel, consultations began with NASA's Johnson Space Center, located only a few miles from the hospital. Close at hand were almost 20 years of experience in developing life support systems, experience that spanned the history of manned space flight. Although the suit built for David looks much like an astronaut spacesuit, its function is not the same. Spacesuits, by means of an oxygen-filled backpack, are designed to maintain a pressurized atmosphere for the astronaut in an environment where there is no atmosphere. David's suit is more closely related to the quarantine garments the first lunar astronauts changed into when they returned to Earth. At the time, no one really knew if the moon contained harmful bacteria, and the suits were meant to protect the Earth from possible contamination. After the third lunar mission, scientists had determined that the moon was harmless and the quarantine was lifted. While these suits were designed to protect the environment, and David's to protect against the environment, the common denominator, technologically, was containment of microorganisms. And it was this technology, developed for use in 1969, that years later became the basis for the system developed for David. But long before arriving at this point, the entire system had to be proven safe and reliable. Throughout the development phase, in space center shops and laboratories, materials and components were tested, analyzed, and tested again. to pass tough requirements every step of the way, requirements much more severe than any they would likely ever encounter in actual use. It was a test regimen every bit as strict as for equipment destined to fly in space. But even with the best testing procedures, no one can pinpoint precisely when a component might fail. Therefore, the system was designed throughout with backup capabilities to ensure continued operation. For example, there are two batteries available to power the blower that supplies filtered air to the suit 
even though only one operates at any given time. Should the operating battery fail, the system automatically switches to the other battery to avoid interruption of the air supply. In addition, the batteries can be charged by ordinary household current. or from an automobile cigarette lighter. But it isn't likely that both batteries would fail at the same time. Should it happen, there is a completely separate blower with its own battery supply that can be connected immediately. To evaluate the system under realistic conditions, like those it would meet with in actual use, NASA had to use test subjects that would fit into the child size suit. This is five-year-old Beth Sauer, a completely healthy child who was used for most of the tests. On several occasions, Beth put the system through its paces with conditions and activities like those expected in normal operation. checkout shall be performed before each use of the MBIS. Okay, CB5 in, CB3 in, CB4 in, CB1 in, CB2 out. As this was a time for testing, it was also a time for training, with David's parents and his nurses getting a complete course in system operation. Since they would perform the actual procedures when the system was turned over to the hospital, the training regimen was exacting in every detail. The manual for operating procedures, like checklists for spaceflight, left nothing to chance. The philosophy here, as in all stages of development, came down to a well-defined goal, to make sure David would enter a germ-free suit and exit the same way. The major stop on David's first outing was a hospital classroom. Nothing out of the ordinary for most six-year-olds, but for him, it offered unique opportunities. There was clowning to do before the mirror. Playing catch with his sister. A genuine thrill when it's the first time. And it was a special treat to work in closer touch with his teacher. Although David performs above average in his schoolwork, the mobile isolator, by broadening his environment, will enhance his educational experiences. In the coming months, outings lasting at least four hours will take him to many places of interest. The park, the zoo, Johnson Space Center, places that will expand his awareness of the world outside. But as David begins to receive the benefits of science and technology, he is also making an important contribution. Through him, medical science has been given a rare opportunity for observation and study. Findings have already led to a better understanding of his own immune defect, and they continue to increase the knowledge of how the human body copes with disease. In another sense, David is a pioneer, the first of many patients who will utilize a system of this basic concept. NASA has already completed and shipped a similar system to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. In the coming months, it will be evaluated on young cancer patients whose body immunity has been temporarily impaired by chemotherapy. It is for this type of patient 
those undergoing drug therapy for disease or organ transplant, that the system will eventually have its widest use. In time, hospitals and medical centers will likely consider these or similar systems a normal part of their equipment inventory. Meanwhile, the preliminary steps have been taken. The first mobile isolation system is operating successfully. Because of it, David's world has expanded beyond the plastic walls of his isolator. It has placed within reach what promises to be a richer, more normal life experience.